Hoffa Day and welcome back to the hotspot, everybody. I'm Jason Salas. Someone who I have not talked about in forever is joining me now in the KUM News Zoom room, Miss Lauren Cabrera, because she has been saving animals and she's been working really, really hard as her as has her team. You saw our friend Steph joined us a couple weeks ago talking about the spaying and neutering uh, effort on Guam. And Lauren is, of course, uh, one of the founders of the Boonie Flight Project, which actually takes um, Saipan-based, CNMI-based, I mean, the entire Marianas and Guam uh, dogs and finds them forever homes. I am never going to get tired of that that slogan. So, Lauren, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And and th there is good news to report because, um, you know, all the effort and all the, you know, blood, sweat and tears and fur and hair falling out, I guess, you know, because it affects both species. Uh, it's really bearing fruit because you guys are really making a difference in the lives of both the animals and in families that um, really, really love them. Yeah, that's that's what we're hoping to do um, as far as getting animals homes and getting animals sterilized so we don't have as many animals to find homes for. Um, we're working really hard on Guam and Saipan to do those things. Okay, now you know me, I'm all about data, right? Uh, hit me with some numbers and everything like that. What have the boonie flight numbers uh, look like and what is the numbers of you know neutering and sterilization? Sure, so boonie flight project, we're getting pretty close to flying 500 uh, dogs off. We're at like 490 now um, as of April, 2021 when we first started. So that's like far surpassed our wildest dreams and we're hoping to just keep going, you know, a thousand would be a cool number, <laughs> but You're halfway maybe there. that'll take one or two years because flights are still quite limited. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as sterilizing, I help coordinate the clinics out of gain uh, through SNP, Spay Neuter Island Pets. And we are coming up on our one year uh, anniversary of this um, version of SNP, which will be February 14th. And we have recently hit our 2000th surgery valentine's day no less <laughs> fittingly yeah exactly i guess <laughs> yeah um it's, so it's all about this man you got you guys are really delivering that yeah we are it's it's great to be able to bring these resources to our community because um you know there's just so many dogs and cats already and making spay and neuter more accessible is so important okay speaking of which lauren my goodness where are my manners we actually have one of those wonderful um which is right now that's that seems to be uh really really comfy hanging out in your lap so who have we got this is a dog i'm on saipan where i live at the animal shelter here and this is one of the dogs here um i'm working with them to help um build an adoption program out of their shelter and this guy has an injured paw so oh. I'm just taking care of him a little bit and he'll come he has no me. name at this point right no name so <laughs> he's in the home and somebody somebody can name him yeah, he's very cute. I mean, the space is very adorable. Obviously, so. he does not love his uh, ears being tugged on and everything like that. So, hey, great yeah. family dog. Very friendly. <laughs> okay, and that 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 is a distinction I want I want to like you know heavily emphasize because these animals that you are being that are being sent you know to the mainland through the Boonie Fly Project, um, this isn't fostering. These are finding you know like we said forever homes, but these are permanent residents with loving families who've been waiting for an additional like animal that they can make as part of of you know their clan. Exactly. It's not a halfway um, house. This is a permanent residence. Not a halfway house. The stateside, you know, dog rescues and shelters, a lot of them have the luxury of being very picky about who adopts their dogs. So they will say no to people who have kids, live in apartments. Um, they're too young because they're under like 21 or something. We are a very open rescue, basically. If you're willing to pay the adoption fee, we're pretty confident that you're going to give the dog a good home because the adoption fee for Boonie Flight Project is between $500 and $750, which all goes towards supporting the flight costs. Um, and you Which know, is a pittance we, considering how much love the dog's going to give you right back. Yeah, the dogs, I mean, they are, we, we're very particular about their behavior and health. So the people are guaranteed to have a great dog and we have a, a wide following and a good reputation now. Um, but yeah, it, most dogs go directly to their new family who picks them up at the airport. We have like a whole matchmaking service and adoptions team that um, makes sure we get good matches. Yeah. Lauren, what is the turnaround time for when people, you know, when when they find you on social media, they follow your Instagram. And by the way, everybody follow Booney Fly Project. I mean, the images and the videos are going to tug at your heartstrings. I mean, you're going to want to adopt like a thousand dogs because yeah. it's really, really stunning, you know, media. Yeah. Um, but 
what have you learned from the past, you know, like, gosh, we're going on like almost two full years now, as you said, and everything. And, and do you have like a consistent pipeline right now? And again, like the turnaround time when people find that dog that they just know they connect with over Instagram, when can they actually bring the dog home? Um, well, the first step is securing the adoption, which can take a matter of minutes, you know, like if, if we're online and they're online at the same time, we do have adoptions, um, an adoptions coordinator living in Kansas, which is helpful. She's adopted a few dogs from us and she's in the same time zone as the adopters. Yeah. Um, it's a <laughs> you lot don't have of, to like, get up at four in the morning. Yeah. Which I did for a while and <laughs> that got old. So glad to have her help. Um, and you know, so much is dependent on availability of the flights. So it can be very variable. There was a family, they adopted a dog from us last year and they were waiting for a Saipan boonie that I picked up on the side of the road. And they waited about um, like five months for her. And she just arrived there in Maine. So they're very excited, but it's amazing. People will wait five months for a dog they've never met. And it's not like online dating, I think. Like they, they like get to know the dog through the internet and then it shows up and they're like, in love and uh, yeah it's <laughs> it's all about finding that connection absolutely yeah <laughs> okay so yeah. um obviously you know there have been a lot of people who have said you know i i believe in what you're doing the mission is fantastic and everything but you know ed as it said you know many hands make light work your numbers continue to go up um you get a lot of theoretical support but what need have you as far as you know boots on the ground and volunteers and people helping out with social media and people doing like oh. the million logistics that you do that is a good question. We have a pretty robust team and we definitely need more help. Um, our primary goal now that we are kind of growing a lot is to pull dogs from gain because we're working very closely with gain. We're trying to actually like become a program under gain. Um, and they are under a lot of pressure from the community to take in animals. There's a really long wait list. So the faster we can move dogs out of gain to fosters and then home stateside, the more space gain we'll have to take in animals. Mm. Um, so we're really building that partnership up. Um, the animals that are available at gain go through a pretty rigorous evaluation. So they're all pretty great dogs uh, with great personalities. And so they're always a good fit for our program. Um, anybody's ever had a negative experience with a game dog i have yet to hear about it and i've been covering them yeah, for 18 years exactly i mean we're just taking more and more of their dogs and they're excellent um time after time and mm -hmm. so if people want to help volunteering at gain that's huge if they want to volunteer doing a short-term foster like for a puppy or a dog until a flight that helps money always helps obviously <laughs> and um we're always looking for other volunteers, even at the, the gain spay neuter clinic. We are always looking for people to help out there um, because that is partially paid staff and partially volunteer driven. Okay. So, so obviously we've got um, those members of the animal kingdom in need of homes. We've got our species, like hopefully volunteering and, and in, in droves to help you out and to complete your mission. So uh, let's talk about that now. What is the next step um, for your work and, you know, the cajillion operations that you oversee right now as far as like helping these animals um you know i think it's just to keep growing what we have going right now um strengthening our our relationship with partners in the community like the department of ag and gain has been huge um a huge you know beneficial all around to them to boonie flight project and um we're just trying to overall the goal is to decrease the number of dogs here in the most humane way possible. So just beefing up our surgery numbers. We have a clinic coming up um, that we're hoping to do 100 surgeries a day with visiting vets coming in from off island that I've helped coordinate uh, and continuing to offer services like that. It's kind of like the old, that's where we're going, just like decreasing the dog population. Mm. Okay, so so Lauren, I've known you long enough to, to know and to be able to like absolutely vet how genuine your love for animals is and it's not just dogs i mean it's cats it's horses it's you know i mean everything i mean you really really care yeah horses you really really care about animals and everything but let me ask now what has the last two years meant for you emotionally and because you deal with so many animals who have a higher degree of you know sensitivity to to stress do the animals pick up on that and you know how how do they actually help you and help galvanize your mission to keep going 
Oh, that's a good question. I mean, when I first started rescue dog rescue stuff, I was very naive and thinking like, we, why don't we have a huge sanctuary where we can put all the dogs and everyone can be happy. And unfortunately, um, as far as reality goes, that's not possible because there's probably close to 70,000 or more dogs at this point running around Guam. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that number's up from 60,000 just a couple of years ago, which is insane. Yeah. In 2014, it was 60. So if the population is growing just a little bit, 70,000 is not a crazy number to think mm -hmm. of, sadly. So, you know, my own personal perspective has changed a lot from like, let's build a sanctuary to like, how can we control this population in a humane way. Um, and Boonie Flight Project is, you know, there's a lot of difficult decisions that are made when you're trying to control an animal population. So Boonie Flight Project has kind of like given a, a positive spin on things because um, you have so many great success stories, seeing the dogs loved stateside and seeing the demand for them grow. Like this guy, I'm hoping he can go on Boonie Flight Project because he's so sweet. There you and go. Well, he, he's getting, so, he's getting some hardcore camera time right now, so I'm, I'm sure someone's gonna someone's gonna pick him up and give him a name. Yeah, and he needs a name. <laughs> he looks like a bad. if if I may be so bold, he looks like a Buster. That that name I is just Buster. That that name is just like it's yeah. That name is just resonating in my brain for some reason. So if if yeah. Bust, Buster, uh, maybe not. No, he turned away. <laughs> no, I think we'll do. Sorry, somebody walking by. I think I Buster think sounds good. Um, okay. He looks like a buster. I don't, we, we, we have a policy. We try not to reuse names for Boonie Flight, but we have not had a buster. So okay. that could be it. Okay. I, I, I'm so glad you brought that up. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up because, because the fact that like each animal has a unique name. Um, Are there any more shirts? Because yeah. I bought a shirt from you guys and it's got all the names like on oh, the back yeah. and everything. Yeah. And the shirt is a fantastic, it's, it is dry fit. It's workout. It's super, super awesome. Do you guys have new shirts coming out? We can always have new shirts. Um, it's kind of like, I think we are thinking about doing a like two year anniversary shirt with all the dogs ever. That's like going to be 500 names by then, hopefully. So yeah, if you want a shirt, go to our website. There's like a little um, shop section or write to us and see what we're up to. It's a great uh, way to, to contribute and, and help out the mission guys. Yeah, exactly. And like, I don't know they are there are good shirts like okay what, what is what is your website because of course everybody's going to go to oh, instagram yeah. like by default mm. sure it's booneyflightproject.com so Very pretty cool. easy to find and then snip the spay and neuter program that i am helping coordinate um out of gain we also have shirts we have tie-dye ones and then we have black dry fit ones that are pretty cool um so those are available at gain or at the snip clinic very very nice. I mean, if, Lauren, if there was ever going to be like a Nobel Prize for uh, for kindness to animals and everything like that, I, I think you know the commit the committee is getting ready to uh, to call you. So I mean, you've done some fantastic work, and now you're multi island too. So you're doing uh, amazing amazing work across the Marianas, and we really really thank you, and I'm sure the animals thank you too. I hope so. <laughs> thank you so uh, much. That's okay, so so, nice. so so final word. Uh, where do people need to uh, need to look if they would like uh, more information or get in touch with you about if they if they really feel um, so motivated to get involved? We have a very responsive social media teams uh, at Booney Flight Project. So if you have any idea of how you want to contribute, volunteer, questions about what we do, um, you could just message us on Facebook um, or email us, go to our website. There's, you know, message us on Instagram, whatever. Somebody, I might respond to you. Somebody will respond to you pretty quick. Yeah. Very excellent. All right. So that's Lauren Cabrera, a friend to animals, across the animal the animal kingdom and um, she's doing fantastic work up there so lauren thank you very much and good catching up with you thank you thank you so much all right we'll talk to you next time all right